Hello, I'm Barry Daniel, and this is the podcast of the Middle Way Society. Our aim is to encourage a universal approach to living a more integrated, ethical life, avoiding dogma or any appeal to authority. My guest today is Norma Smith, a retired art teacher who recently became a member of the Society. Welcome to the MWS podcast, Norma. Thank you very much. So, Norma, first of all, would you like to tell us a little little bit about yourself? Yes, I'll get it into as compact a nutshell as I can. (laughs) Um, I grew up in London, in North London. I was a schoolgirl during the war. Um, When I was 19, I went to Guy's Hospital to study to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. Um, We had to live in, um, in those days. It's a big teaching hospital, and it was rather like being in a boarding school. (laughs) Anyway. um, How was that? How was that experience? Oh, I was very happy there. Yes, I enjoyed enjoyed it. And um, I, I met my future husband there in we decided to get married fairly quickly. Yes. Yeah. Meant leaving the hospital, and I became a dental nurse. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we lived on a boat in St Catherine's Dock near Talbridge. Wow. <laughs> which was in those days just a dock to store molasses. You know? uh-huh. And did you travel with the boat, or, or was it mainly just a like a home? No, we didn't. We didn't when it was there. No, we yeah. didn't. We had a dinghy. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, and then um, after a year or so, um, climbing up and down a ladder when I was pregnant wasn't a good idea. And so we moved to outside London. Uh-huh. I had four children. Um, sadly, my marriage ended after 15 years. Mm-hmm. And I took the children back to London and had to find work. Right. So it was you and, and four kids. Yes. Right. That was a. Ch- I imagine it was a, quite a challenge. It was really yeah. yes, but I, you know, I had support. I mean, yeah. we weren't enemies. So we, we we just didn't live together anymore. Yeah. Um, and um, so I had to find work. So I've always worked with people. So I became a visiting officer in the civil service. Right. In those days, everybody who needed benefit had to be visited in their home Uh so I loved this work going I'd go around to visit people in the morning and then come back to the office in the afternoon I did that for about three and a half years and then I had a change of tack and joined the education welfare service which also meant visiting I liaised between head teachers and Mm -hmm. parents and why did you make that change? Well, um, I, they wanted me to, to go up higher, the, higher in the ladder, and I got cold feet, basically. Okay. <laughs> the lack of confidence, really. But the time came in about the middle of the 1970s when I had the opportunity to study. So I did a degree in art and religious science mm-hmm. and then finished my teaching year to be an art teacher. And soon after that... I moved to North Devon. My children had all grown up and left. So I moved to North Devon. My sister and her husband and children lived next door, and it was in the country, and it was beautiful, and I loved it. Uh Uh, But after about 12 years in Devon, um, two of my daughters had children, and the pull of family came greater. So I moved to Brighton, where they all lived and I've been here for getting on for 16 17 years now and do you and feel I, quite settled in I, I just love Brighton oh. it has the countryside and it has the seaside yeah and where I live in a lovely little community we're sort of um, in in fairly narrow streets in terraced houses But um, we're all very friendly, and it's a very good place to be. Sounds lovely. (laughs) Yes. Um, And that's it, really. It brings me up to date. Yeah, and what was it that brought you to the Middle Way Society? Um, Well, from about... In 1945, my mother died. 
Mm-hmm. And from then on, I really searched for somewhere to belong. Yeah. And it's been a long search on and off over decades. And um, I turned to religion at first, but um, didn't really find the answers. But um, I found the Middle Way Society, which is good for various reasons for me. It's an online site, and it welcomes everybody, yep. especially if you're willing to spend time and thought in finding a way to somehow integrate the contrast of good and bad or this, them and us. Yeah, yeah. And um, conflict in general, and use that energy to find a middle way, a path that you can walk. So you've really, do you feel that you've embraced this, do you? Well, it's it's very early days, but yeah. I must say I feel very at home, and I feel free to to say what I think, and I'm not restricted by having to think about breaking any dogmas, or I don't think along metaphysical lines at yeah. all. That's similar for me as well, um, Norma. That, for example, with Robert, I think he's he's um, he's he's made a very coherent, rational, and well thought through uh, theory. But you know, which is provisional, and it's um, it's a work in progress. And I think one of the things why the society was set up was that um, was to encourage this uh, this idea of collaboration so that you know that so it can be developed uh, communally in a sense if, if you see what I mean. I do and I am very grateful to Rob because I'm on a learning curve now and um, you know I'm trying to think clearly um, which he really advocates and yeah. uh, and trying to um, also have time to think about being in the in the minute, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. trying not to spend time thinking about what you said and did and what other people said and did in the past, and trying not to think about future plans, but spending a small part of the day trying to just be calm in yeah. your mind. So that's an important factor. So ha- having um learning and having a quiet time sitting meditating or painting that's another way of of becoming absorbed in the moment yeah or gardening i mean everybody has their own way of doing it of course yeah uh, do you do you think you've um for most of your, your life you've had a sort of intuitive sense about the middle way i think so yes i think so but you know, lots of people I can think of as leading a middle way, but it does need a certain amount of effort to work things through. Yeah. You know, and um, I'm happy to do that because uh, I love to learn. That sounds great. And you mentioned, as you say, you were an art teacher, and and um, um, art has been um, uh, presumably a very important part of your life. Um, has it helped you in good times and bad? Oh, yes, yes. Um, I didn't do much teaching in schools when I moved to Devon, but I did set up two adult art classes for a weekly class in in two Devon villages. And it was amazing to see what was produced by these these adults, these friends who became friends. Um, You know, we had exhibitions and they probably hadn't picked up a paintbrush since they were at school. Mm -hmm. And so I was very happy about doing that. But then I I did have to come back and live with, in Brighton with the children <laughs> nearby. Not on top of me, but nearby. Okay. Yes. Okay. And um, do you find that, for example, what is your main medium when, when at home? Do you oil paint or do you...? I used to paint in oils, but now, um, because I don't have any space other than my sitting room to paint in. I use acrylic which doesn't smell and it's water-based and it's very easy to use. So uh, acrylic is mostly what I use these days. Okay and if there was a spectrum between being 
sort of uh, spontaneous and finickety and perfectionist, where would you be on that spectrum, do you think? <laughs> That's a very good question, because I might start out with an initial idea yeah. um, and a framework, which, you know, you do need. Um, but then often I'll go in a different direction altogether and the result will be not quite as I expected it to be, but still very interesting. So it's a time to let your imagination wander. And, right, and, and just sort of let go. And let go, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, you have to know some skills, of course. You have to have some skills. You know how to have to know how to mix your paint and what mm -hmm. makes a good composition, whether it's, you know, figurative or if it's abstract. But, you know, you have to have a few basic ideas about how to paint okay. like having to learn the piano you know it helps to learn your scales and a bit of music theory mm -hmm. and one thing in our pre-chat before we had this interview you mentioned that you you're an agnostic um that's that's the term you feel most comfortable with could you could you explain a little bit about that yes i will um i originally called myself an atheist but, um, you know, I, I was led to believe that really you can't be one thing or another. You can't be a theist. It means if you're a theist, there's also an atheist. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a sort of middle way. Although I lean towards being an atheist, I wouldn't say I am anymore. But um, I, Robert has a phrase which he says, be a hard agnostic, which seems to fit the bill as far as I'm concerned. What does that mean to you, hard agnostic? It means that I'm a finite person. I can't really know that, um, you know, there is a God or there isn't a God. I mean, I have Christian friends who firmly believe in a God. And, you know, I have no, no problem with them, but it doesn't work for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's and is that Robert uses the term soft agnosticism as well? I mean, um, my understanding that that's sort of, I think that's the term that what's often thought of as agnosticism and the idea of sitting on the fence. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about this, but for me, uh, that is a sort of hanging on to the possibility of certainty when what we need to do is, you know, really come to to terms with the impossibility of certainty. And, uh, I, I do agree with that. Yes, I absolutely agree. Yes. Um, so now I'm very comfortable with that term, uh, hard agnostic. I've actually used it once or twice with people, though. Normally, I've said it, and they, they look like I come from Planet Zong. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but so it's, I think yes. there's, there's a bit of an awareness building needs to be done there. But uh, yeah, it's it really makes sense to me. It's it's just knowing that you don't know, really, isn't it? It is. It's exactly that. Yeah. And I love the idea that I'm just catching on to, which I should have maybe caught on to, that we think in metaphors. You know, we say the days are rushing by. Well, you don't look out of the window and say, see days rushing by. But we absolutely understand what it means when you say the days are rushing by or we've hit a brick wall. Um, we know we know what it means even though we haven't actually hit a brick wall, you know. Exactly, yes. Uh, so we do think in metaphors, and um, there are metaphors for many myths and you know, stories. And yeah, and have you come across um, any of the work of George Lakoff? I have, now, very, very recently, and I'm absolutely in, inspired by what he says. Um, he, he has a very easy approach to telling you something really very difficult and um, I find him very easy to listen to on on YouTube I spend a lot of time learning from discussions on YouTube um, because I just enjoy learning I must admit <laughs> That's great yeah I think um, Robert um, sees um, George Lakoff's ideas on embodied meaning as a very very influential on 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 his on the whole idea of integration of meaning in middle way philosophy it's something i i'm keen to learn learn more about so i'll 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 have a look at i'll, I'll find that I'll find that link and and i'll just when we put this up on the site i'll uh, 
I'll put a link to it as well. Oh, that would be really good. Yes, that would okay. be really good. Okay, well, Norma, it's been lovely talking to you today, and well, I've uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, and 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 I'm looking forward to to um, interacting and with you and exchanging ideas and thoughts on, on you know on the on the on the site. Me too. I look forward to it very much. Okay, well, thank you very much for for talking to me today. It's been my pleasure. You can find out more about Middleway Philosophy at www.middlewaysociety.org.